I just want to start by saying thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. To celebrate reaching the 500 mark, I thought I'd answer a few questions that I'd gotten in the comments. I'd be very interested to know how you managed to get this Cliff Williams bass tone. I'm glad you liked the tone in that video. Uh, I have to admit though, I didn't actually put a lot of thought into what I was doing at that point. Me and my friend Rob decided that we would try and be the first bass and guitar video to do this song once it came out at midnight on the 13th of November 2020. So we transcribed it, we recorded it, we filmed it, we edited it, and we got it all done within about four hours. We stayed up till four in the morning to do it. But the last thing on my mind really was trying to get like a great tone. I just plugged it straight into my Focusrite, then into Logic. I think I might have used a Logic plugin, like a stock plugin. Uh, the bass was set up, so both pickups were on full, and the treble was also on full. I think if there are any similarities in the tone between the original song and the cover that I did, it will be the pick play and using a pick. I think that was what did it. But if you want some more solid advice on getting a Cliff Williams tone, there's a few things that you can do. I think in the studio he plays a Stingray bass with flat wound strings and he goes straight into an Ampeg SVT. But I also think it's about the way he plays it, so using a pick, locking in with the groove, that's going to get you most of the way there I think. Okay, next question. Any tips on how to do the fast part in the beginning of verse two? So this is referring to a cover that I did of Knowledge by Green Day, which is a really old Green Day song. I think they covered it as well. I can't remember who it was originally. I'll, I'll find out and put it in there at the uh, editing stage. So this is definitely the hardest part of the song. I thought it was quite difficult to pull off. I'm not 100% convinced that this is exactly how it's done on the record. It's definitely in the right ballpark. But if I've ever got to learn anything difficult, the first thing I'll do is slow it right down. Uh, one thing it took me quite a long time to do was learn the patience to actually slow something down. It's not something that we naturally want to do, I think, and I find that a lot with students as well, is you want to play at full speed straight away. But slowing things down is a, a great way of trying to learn difficult things. So the first bit is... So you, there you are playing down on the, on the fifth fret and then you're gonna pop with your second finger. So you're playing with the plectrum, and still popping with your second finger. There's like a grace note in there as well. I think the bit you mean though is this bit. There's a few things going on here. So I'm playing up on the fifth fret, and then I'm playing down, and then I'm hammering on, and then I'm coming up again. So it's up, down, hammer, up. And then on the next string, we're gonna do, play down once on the fifth fret, and hammer on and pull up. So all together. So just break it down, play it really slowly. And don't speed it up until you get feel very comfortable with that. Okay, next question. Those are great looking and sounding basses. Can you recommend something similar? but a less expensive alternative. This question is in regards to the Dingwall review that I did. I'm still enjoying that bass very much, but like I said in the review, it's quite an expensive bass for what it is. So here are a few recommendations. So I've tried the Ibanez EHB 105MS. It's clear with the, the Ibanez are kind of going for that Dingwall sound with this one. This one's about 1,100, so it's quite a lot less expensive. Core also have an option which is slightly cheaper. And I've also heard good things about the Spectre Dimension. This fan fret design on basses is quite popular at the moment, so I think we'll probably start to see them come down in price as different manufacturers enter the game. Okay, next question. Something that has intrigued me is your Sandberg bass, particularly the Zero frets. Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite basses. I think it actually might be my favorite. An interesting thing about this particular bass, I guess you could call it a semi-custom. So if you go to the Sambo website, you can design your own bass, and then you can order that bass through a retailer in your given country. So as you can see, it's a, it's a Fender Jazz style bass. 
Um, there's a few differences. So this is one of the last batch, if not the last batch, I think maybe, that they ever made of the Fender style bases. I don't think they do them anymore. They've redesigned it into their own style. So this is one of the last Fender style bases that Sandberg made. So we have uh, four strings. It's a 34 inch scale going from the zero fret, which I'll talk about in a minute, up to the bridge. So we've got a rosewood fretboard. This is with the white pearl block inlays. I think the body is alder, which gives it a nice light weight. As you pointed out, yeah, they've got a zero fret. So the benefit of a zero fret is there's less stress on the nut, so there's less wear and tear on the nut. It also makes for a smoother tuning, and I can definitely say uh, that does make a difference. I also believe it helps with intonation as well. Okay, uh, the controls work slightly differently than the traditional Fender Jazz. So you have a master volume, you have a blend knob between these two, so all the way that way is here, all the way that way is here, so I have it somewhere in the middle for both. And then you've got your treble cut slash boost knob. It's a passive, but very versatile. Uh, I've used it on a crazy amount of gigs uh, actually recently not that there's been many gigs recently but in the last like couple of years I've been trying this bass instead oh, there's another Sandberg but we've got the fifth string here so uh, and it's this one's active as well so there's more tone options uh, it gives it a bit more powerful um, yeah I love Sandberg basses I think they're great okay next question is what flat wound strings are you using? I just got this question this morning as I woke up. So um, it's referring to the uh, My Girl cover that I did. It's James Jameson on bass. So I used this bass, which was correctly identified as having flat wound strings. So I used Diodario uh, Chrome flat wounds. String gauge is 40, 60, 80, 100. I've always been happy with Diodario. I think they're a great brand. I think these uh, strings and this bass get really close to the Jameson sound. Have a listen to the video and see if you agree with me. However, if you did want to use the exact type of string that Jameson used, he allegedly used a heavy gauged Labella flat wound string. If anyone has any other questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. If I accrue enough questions, I will do another one of these Q&A videos. Uh, I've really enjoyed making these videos and I'm really happy that you have liked them enough to subscribe. So thank you again. Thank you.